Hello and welcome to ULMX German for Beginners. This video, as you can see, I have the microphone because it's about pronunciation and you being able to hear what I'm saying clearly is of utmost importance. It's a huge topic, pronunciation. It's not just a one video topic, not by any stretch. Pronunciation is the backbone of verbal communication when it comes to the language that we're using. Of course, verbal communication encompasses tonality and a host of other non-linguistic characteristics, but when we're talking about speaking a language and the communication that we transfer from one word to the next, from the speaker to the listener, it's kind of like the handwriting for speaking. It's just so much easier to read printed letters than it is to read someone's chicken scratch, or as uh, Germans say, someone with a sauklau. <laughs> so, the pronunciation topic is so big that it's impossible not to break it up into multiple videos. Just um, the basics of each letter, letter combination, vowel, consonant, and the small little differences between English and German, as well as the similarities which we can use to help us come along a little bit more quickly. Um, there will be other videos. There'll be videos about little tiny things that maybe aren't so tiny, or things that a lot of people assume are the same but aren't the same. I'm going to take my time with this video, and um, we're going to break it into consonants and vowels. There could be a whole video just about the relationship between consonants and vowels because it's hard for me right now not to dive into the way they are really, really, really interlinked. And I don't know if everyone has this initial feeling, but my first impression was that uh, an accent is mostly about the vowels because anyone I had ever heard with an accent just seemed to have sort of like a different idea of what the air coming out was supposed to be formed like like sound like and that air is more of the vowels and the way we shape the air is the consonants with the mouth and mostly the mouth in some action in the throat but most of it's uh with the consonants is in the mouth and the vowels are deeper the vowels are usually coming from a more uh, general area because that, that a vowel is actually the air coming out and the consonants are like I said how you shape and change the way the air flows and therefore the way the air sounds so neither is more important than the other I have it in this order we're starting with the consonants and um, like I said when I first started my language journey I thought the consonants were impossible to mess up. But let me tell you, there are a lot of little differences and when you put them all together, it can create a strong foreign accent. And um, if that's what you're trying to avoid, if you want to make pronunciation um, a tool instead of a hindrance, then Start, let's just dive into these consonants. You, you have to say it the way they say it. Otherwise, the understanding is going to be somewhat delayed, at least. We're going to start with the letters that are actually the same. So, I have a list here of, I counted, there are 21 consonants in the Latin alphabet what we use. And uh, of the consonants that are the same, I have I have 12. And of two of those, it's the same half the time and it's different half the time. So let's get right into it. This one's the same. S. 
A single S at the beginning of a word or a syllable ought to be pronounced voiced, um, which means like a Z. Zind, Zayen, Zagen, Zupa. This also applies to almost any S when the S isn't an S set or double S, like lesen, reise, speise, und so weiter. If you look to the Duden, the dictionary which describes how proper speech and writing is supposed to be, the S used this way is meant to be voiced, like an American Z. Remember, the German Z takes a different form. It has a T sound at the beginning of it, so don't try and pronounce things like that, like Zeit. It's not Zagen, it's Zagen. If you were to use the S like you would expect to from English, it's not going to be noticeable as an error. The S in Southern Germany is by many people pronounced unvoiced like a snake, um, which follows in the tendency to make the easier sounds with your mouth. It's slightly less effort for an unvoiced S and has... Uh, as such, very thoroughly blended into everyday speech. If you're listening to the Tour de France, the announcers are going to use the voiced S because that's the correct one, and it's all about correctness and standard German on television. But either way, you would have seen this before, and it is nothing totally unique to the German language, especially in British or Canadian English, where in American English, a Z is used, the British version will have an S, and the suffix I-Z-E is the classic example of this. If you look at the word laser, it's got an S. So, it's something that you've done before, the only thing you have to pay attention to is the pattern. Um, and the difference in pattern you need to look out for is, with the S at the beginning of a word, it's technically not supposed to be voiceless, like snake, but rather voiced, like z, z. But if you do do it unvoiced, there are a lot of intelligent native speakers who are uh, doing the same thing with Don't you. Don't worry about S. You can do S already. P. P, 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 p. With the microphone, you have to be really careful with a P. Because this air that comes out splashes into the microphone and p, 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 you get a popping sound. But a P is called a plosive. P, p, p. You're really letting air build up behind your lips p, and you're getting it to shoot out. P. It's also the same. M, another simple one like P, where you put your lips together mm, and you make a noise even though your lips are closed. Mmm. 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 It's a beautiful letter. I'm so happy that my name starts with it. H, or as they say in Britain, H. H is also pronounced very similarly, similarly in German. Ha. 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 It's really just like a dog panting. <laughs> Luckily, there are no words spelt just like that with only H's. Okay, N. Also, like M, pretty much not doing anything. Mmm. Mmm. Only difference is your lips aren't closed. Mmm. 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 Okay. Q. Q. Another classic same pronunciation. K. 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 Kind of like a K. Do not worry about that, I say. Okay, now B. B. You already know how to do it. B. X. Don't worry about X for now. Although sometimes it can be pronounced weird in English, it can do that in German too. You know how like usually you would expect it to make a X sound and sometimes it makes a 
z sound like in xerox you have to be careful of that at any at any rate now g can be the same in which case g g g gut it means good g gut it's not it's not funny like in uh, dutch if you've learned any dutch g uh, g makes this forget that it's just normal but sometimes and it's often the case at the end of a word possibly always at the end of a word g makes a k sound so at the end of the word um day in german day is tag it's spelled with a g but you don't say tag tag no you say tag guten tag and that's the kind of thing where these little differences will start to add up and people will be like I thought you said something funny, and now you said something funny again. Where are you from? And that's that's how a conversation always starts. Oh, where are you from? So where are you from? Just a conversational question. I'm just asking. Just asking where you're from. It's like, come on, man. Just let me live my life. If you don't want people to ask you that, then do not say guten tag. Say guten tag. It's a small difference, and these small differences add up. Now... Don't get too carried away because the plural for days is the same word with an E on the end. So like days has an S. Days in German is Tag with an E at the end. Not Tag. It's Tag. So it does have the G. It is a G. Just at the end of the word, it's kind of a K sound. Guten Tag. And at the beginning of the word, Gut. Gut. Gut, guten Tag. At the beginning of the word, it's the G that you're familiar with. G. At the end of the word, just be careful. It's probably, almost definitely, a K at the end. And uh, G and K are examples of uh, letters which are basically the same sound, one voiced and one unvoiced, as we talked about in the alphabet video. Um, F and V are examples of this and um, G and K D and T which leads me to K which is the same K. Um, and just watch out for this in spelling almost any time that a word starts with C uh, in English and has that sort of uh, K sound like say conventional that's the word that comes to mind for me at the moment. The exact same word is just always spelled with a K in German. Konventionell. Konventionell. With a K. Always. <laughs> so if you haven't seen the word yet, but you've heard it, and you're like, oh, that's like one of these words, because there are plenty of them that are pretty much, I would say, the same word. The same word in English and in German, but you've never seen it written. And you're like, wait a second, is this with a C or a K? It's always with a K. When we get to C, we'll talk about why that is. Okay, and D. D is a letter that can be sometimes different, but it's most of the time very much the same. Um, D is uh, the counterpart to T. D is the voiced version. D, 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 and T, T, T. It's the same exact tongue position if you will but with d the um the consonant is voiced and sometimes when it comes at the end of a word you have to watch out because it is not voiced which is the same situation as with g so at the end of a word d is pronounced like a t okay the word for bath in German is B A D B A D Bad 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 See how it's not Bad 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 And 
an, a, an example of a word that starts with D is the word for date. Um, so today's date, das datum, datum, das, das, d, d, as, das, datum, bat, bat, bat. And our last single letter consonant, which is the same, is F, another fricative. Another one you have to be really careful with around the microphone. You already know F very well. Okay, now, to be honest, this is where it starts getting pretty fun. Um, it's good to know that S, P, M, H, N, Q, B, X, K, and F are pretty much always there for you. But it's not all the letters in the alphabet. So let's talk about the ones that we're not addressing, so we, that we haven't addressed so far. R. And I'm starting with the hardest one, in my personal opinion here. R is tricky because there are two different uses of it and both of them are non-existent in American English. British English, it's a different situation because the first situation where R comes at the end of a sound or at the end of a word, then that R isn't pronounced pretty much. It's kind of floating out there open and unarticulated but British English people do this all the time like in water in American well apart from the fact that British people say what -uh, the middle of the word being left out if you forget about that part and just look at the end say they did pronounce the T water it's still water instead of water do not put the R there in German if you put it there in English, I personally am all for it. I'm an American pronouncer, but um, the British people get on fine without it. Water. So in German, for an example, we'll take the same <laughs> the same word. Water in German is Wasser. Wasser. And it's not Wasser. No, it's Wasser. But um, that leads us on to how you would pronounce it if it were there. It's like this. Err. If it were pronounced, it would be err. 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 And that's the name of the letter. Err. Err. Okay, so let's find a word where we can use that. A lot of times, people will be talking to you about a number. And um, if there's any kind of background noise or any kind of distraction involved and they didn't quite hear you and you might have said two or you might have said three, you might feel the need to really emphasize the R on three. And it would sound like this. <laughs> and the pronunciation, the technique to do this R doesn't come naturally to everyone. It didn't come naturally to me at all. At first, I was confused because in some situations, R disappears, like in Vasa. So at the end of the word, you have this uh. So I always was confused. I thought in the middle it had to be like this, far, unpronounced, and at the end, unpronounced, far. And uh, that R, fr, that, it comes from way back in the throat. Whereas with the American R, it's like up here somewhere. R. R. Um, and then you always kind of hear that trilling. A trill is like, it's going like this. That's a trilled L. And the R, it's doing something... Funny back there, I can hear it. Uh, uh, it's back there. How do they do that? 
Well, I struggled with it for months, and I would have to advise anyone who's having trouble to really try and support it from the belly. If you can just make this sound, like the end of the, you know, just the open, wa ah 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 or vasa, vasa, ah, uh, ah. Uh. If you can get that going, you need to push more air up from your stomach at that point. So, uh, uh, actually push your stomach in like that, your diaphragm. That's my main tip. And when I realized that, my R's came together. And it's important. What if, what if your favorite thing to do is ride bicycles? The word starts with an R. Rad. Rad. You have to support it from the stomach, the belly. Uh, I've gotten the best tips about sort of posture and stomach support from singing coaches. Look up some singing tips online. I'll, I'll maybe... You can find one in the description down below. This being able to pronounce the R really will help you with your confidence because it's, it's so frequently used. And to be honest, um, it doesn't come naturally. A lot of people in German have trouble pronouncing the American R because it's like, what the hell are they doing? I've never done that. I've never needed to do that. What? So so eventually you might get it or maybe you'll just never get it. You have to deliberately try to make sure that it comes around. Uh, uh. Now, the next one's a lot easier, but if you mess it up, just as noticeable. L. In the German language, there's a slight difference. And some people might be saying it's really the same consonant why are we even talking about l <clears throat> the difference is slight i get it but you have to be able to do this slight difference and it's definitely worth noting so let's take the sound in isolation first l l l l okay that's the american version and the german version l L, 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 L. The difference is slight. It's not some different sound. It's a different variation. And the difference is about one centimeter on the roof of your mouth. Move that tongue back about one centimeter and you're going to have amazing results. I can guarantee it. So the word for light in German is Licht. Not Licht. Not Licht. 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 All right. Now, V. Known as V in German. The letter V is known as V. And this is a significant observation because the name gives it away. It's not called vow. It's not called vow. It's called foul. And the reason it's called foul is because it makes an F sound. And this F is no joke. You have to pronounce it like an F. It is not a V. There are exceptions to the rule, but don't assume that a, a V is always a V like in vase. The German word for vase does happen to be vase. And that's a voiced F or a V sound. Vase. But most of the time. And this is an important word. Volkswagen. Like in Volkswagen, the... F is pronounced, the V is pronounced like an F, which leads us to the next important letter that you're going to need to know, and you're going to need to know the combination of V and V. V. That is the German pronunciation of VW, as in Volkswagen, and that's the way they call it. They call, they call it VW. 
VW. So, V is W, and as you can tell, it makes an oddly V-ish sound. It sounds actually kind of like the letter V, <laughs> and it's right next door. What are the chances? There is no woo. Woo is uh, typically non-German and typically difficult for Germans to pronounce because they don't get any practice doing it in their own language. W is pronounced like V. V. It's not exactly the same as V. It's more like V. If you look at the shape of my mouth and why this is important to watch as a video some for some of the parts at least, um, it's not as closed as a V. You can see here. V. If I were to say it like um, V, my teeth would be much more on top of my lips and my mouth wouldn't be as relaxed as V. And, um, yeah, that comes up a lot. Uh, VW is the biggest company in Germany. It is a big deal to know the name. VW. And don't say VW. VW. I don't know. You have to know how to say VW. And it gives it away. And take that, what you learn from pronouncing VW, VW, and apply it to the rest of your usage of those two letters, V and W, V and V. Now, the other side of the D sound, like I said, at the end of a word like bod can sound like a T. Don't forget that. I'm mentioning it here in the different section as well. Okay, J. It does not sound like J. 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 No. No, not even close to that. It sounds like a Y. It sounds like e, e. So um, the word for yes, it has the same e at the beginning. Yes, yeah, but it's spelled with a J. Yeah, and the name of the letter J is yacht. Yacht. So the more you pr practice the alphabet, like I said in the first video about the alphabet, um, when you know the name is yacht, then you know the pronunciation is yi. And um, that's not entirely foreign, and it's not entirely absent from uh, the English language, such pronunciation, but that is the rule. And little tip, I just found this out a few months ago. Germans like to spell things with a Y at the beginning as a joke, <laughs> and uh, it's pronounced with a J. <laughs> this is a joke, guys, but it's done, like businesses. There's a place called Jeans Hall in Ulm, and it's pronounced Jeans Halle. Jeans is spelt with a Y. I also know of a company called the Juicery. Juicery is the German pronunciation. This is the way they're pronouncing it. Juicery. <laughs> it's spelled with a Y. It's just funny. It's just weird. <laughs> but it's true. It's, it's, a, it's a good joke. I think it's a pretty good joke, personally. Okay. We're getting down to the end of the list now. Now we're at the actual letter Y. Y is used very differently. So first of all, What's its name? Ypsilon. Ypsilon. And it's a it's a weird vowel. I mean, it's weird in English, too, because they say the vowels are A, E, I, O, and U, and sometimes Y. It's like, okay, sure, whatever you guys say. But in German, it makes an U sound. U, Ypsilon. Upsilon, like oops, kind of. U, upsilon. And um, 
Yeah, that's really all I have to say about that. I mean, is it a consonant or is it a vowel? That's the real question. That's the real debate we need to be having here. Um, <sighs> wish we, I, I wish science could iron that out at some point uh, in my lifetime. But we'll get, the, we'll get to that in the vowels video. So, we have three letters left. One letter does not exist in the English language. The other three are C, G, and Z. Now, G we already talked about. At the end of a word, it's different. At the beginning of the word, it's the same. You can rewind if you need to review on that. So at the end of the word, like talk, it's like a K sound. At the beginning of a word, it's just like in English, good, gut. Gut. So now that leaves C and Z. So C is never hard like a K ever, as I mentioned earlier. What you need to notice, though, is that it sounds a bit like a T. So the name is say. It's not say, say. It's say, say. Say is the name of the letter, and in that light, you have to remember that it can make a C sort of uh, T-S sound, like a T. Um, say. I'm having a hard time thinking of a word with a C in it. Hmm. Say. Hmm. Like just a C. All right, so the letter C is not a common letter for the German language to start a word with, but um, there are a lot of foreign words which start with C, and um, what I was trying to describe where uh, it starts with sort of a T sound is, for example, in the word Caesar, like Julius Caesar, Caesar. In many words, it's been adopted from English or French, and the C or CH do have a normal kind of uh, English spelling, like the word camping, for example. Don't let me confuse you. Camping is actually pronounced like camping. Cafe is pronounced like cafe. So the C is K. But watch out, because Julius sees. Caesar is not his name in German. It's Julius Caesar. And for whatever reason, that that guy's name comes up. I don't know. Maybe it's the salad. Let's go back to Z. All right. So Z does totally have a tz, 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 tz sound. Its name is Zet. And you don't just say Zet. It's tz, Zet. It's the same as with the, t, the C. It has this T sort of beginning and then you go over that into the letter so set set and it's noticeable if you say zeit you're saying it wrong that's the word for time z e i t zeit 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 and um, you can actually see that a lot of words that start with t start with z uh, in German because that sound has kind of been attributed to that letter. Uh, so time and sight, sight, sight. I almost forgot about Schaff S. <laughs> in the different category, I got to Z and then I skipped right ahead to, uh, or I got to C and I skipped right ahead to the combinations, but the Schaff S has its own video on this channel, and uh, it's also a letter that doesn't exist in the English alphabet, just as the uh, umlauts do not exist in the English uh, alphabet or language. God, uh, just one, one, I can't think of any words with a C in the middle of them, because usually... it's in a combination of letters which leads me to part two now we're in 35 minutes in this video and 
we have only discussed the single letters. But that's going to help us a lot as we move through the combinations because a lot of the sounds are the same or at least how you would think they would be pronounced because some of them aren't used in the English language but they're intuitive enough to where you don't have to actually worry about it. When you see it, you're going to spell it out correctly. I'm trying to help you get over those things that when you try to spell it out, you're basically doomed <laughs> unless you already know how this pronunciation system works. So, start with some familiar stuff. T R tr tr same exact. Don't worry about T and R. P and H also make a f sound. F. Um C and K also make the traditional k sound. K just like in English. P and L I don't, wait, let me think. Yep, no, we do make this sound or letter combination, sound combination in English as well. Pl, pl, place, plots. S and S, obviously. I mean, S and S is a super easy one. S, it's where we started with the single letters. S, can't go wrong. N and G, you're familiar with the N and G. Ing, ing. Although, from my experience, a lot of Germans like pronouncing it more like ink, 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 because it's not actually as commonly used. Like, if you think about it, in English, we use it for every present progressive verb. Ing, 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 ing. Everything is inging. And uh, in German, it's there. It's often in the end of, like, a place name. It's in words, but it's just not that really really frequent sort of use sound that characterizes the language like I'm I'm I don't know any Polish but everyone says Polish is like like a lot of sh consonants <laughs> which leads me to my next consonant combination s c h always sh don't worry about it you got that you got that in the bag um n and n N and N's a good, solid, easy one, just like M and M together. M, N, I mean, when you see that it's two, you know that the vowel before it's short. Um, that will be intuitive as well. Uh, L and L, same deal, but remember the L's have to be L, not L. And T and T, but uh, basically you can always rely on these double consonants to signal a short vowel before them. All right. Now, T and Z, you would probably, uh, you would just be kind of surprised to see the combination, but you would probably pronounce it correctly if you were to follow your gut instinct, which is to just say T, Z, and that's what you're supposed to do. T, it's basically T, um, plots, 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 uh, but that's the same as in English with a TS ending, basically. Platz. Uh, TZ, but you've probably never seen it in English unless it was like a foreign word. Just kind of a funny looking thing at, at first. And uh, KT. I mean, KT, it's. No, you would usually do KET or something like that uh, in English with a vowel before you get to the T. But in German, they just throw it right on there. So the. The German word from market is actually the exact same without the E between the K and the T. So it's mocked instead of market. Mocked. K -t -k -t -k -t. It's really not going to be a problem, I don't think, because k -t isn't like too much of a tongue twister. K -t -k -t. You can do that uh, without a ton of practice. Um, BT is a bit more cumbersome for the lips, the tongue, whatever you have to use to form the sounds, but it is exactly what it looks like. So the, mm, I'm going to go with the German word for you guys have hopped, hopped, put, 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 put. 
you can definitely do it. Uh, you will get used to it, but it could be something that doesn't roll off the tongue very well at the beginning. Okay, H and R. H and R is a letter combination that makes sure you know that that R, it gives away that that uh, A is going to be open and that R is going to be water. Just watch out for the H and R combination. You'll see it. It's not counterintuitive. That's for sure. There's nothing to be afraid of there. And LZ. So like the state, Rheinland West Pfalz. Uh, there must be a better word, but whatever. Pfalz. Um, L and then Tz. Alz. All combinations that are intuitive, especially when you know the individual letters and how they should be pronounced. So now we're moving on to the groups or the group of letters where... These letters are kind of weird. Like, are you serious? You really want me to pronounce these, like, individually? Or, like, what? <laughs> that Okay, so let's see here. We'll start with this group of... Um, you pronounce both. And in English, it's common to leave things out. We pronounce nothing <laughs> sometimes. Uh, an E at the end of a word for the British, anything in the middle of the word, <laughs> like wa uh, where the T go? <laughs> but here we have, or the word knee, it starts with a K, K-N-E-E, -E, and we say knee, where'd the K go? In German, you pronounce that K, you don't let that K get away, <laughs> so it's K-N, knee, that's the same word. It's for it's the word for knee, knee. Uh, so kn, 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 and it's like it takes a second. You're like chopping it up. You have to get the K out before you can start on the N. There's no squishing the sound together. It's two hard sounds, and they are both individuals. Knee, 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 and um, it's the same with these next two. P S, ps, ps. Uh, really only important for words like um, psychology or psychiatrist or whatever. Um, but the word for psycho is psycho. Psycho. So it's pss, 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 pss. That gave me a lot of trouble at the beginning, I have to admit. I always wanted to say psycho and just leave the P off. You can't. I don't make up the rules. And the next one also starts with P, and it's PF. And this is a combination that is not just using a few words like psycho or psychotherapist or whatever. Um, PF is really frequently used. So uh, this word I use a lot personally. Uh, it's the word for path. The word for path. So it could be in the forest or it could be on a computer with your file system. It's PFAD. Fod, 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 fod. It's kind of like when you think something's not funny, something, or maybe you do. I don't know. And you're trying to hold it in, or someone said something, and you're kind of like, I don't know, something like that. It's actually like, that's the sound. These next two, S T and S P. Pay close attention because these are really, 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 really important. You always, at the beginning of a word, pronounce these as if it was not just an S, but rather an S-C-H. So, when you pronounce S-P at the beginning of a word, jump is sprung, Sp sprung, sprung, S-P, sprung. And it's the exact same with ST. At the beginning of a word. At the end of a word, these are still pronounced individually. So at the end of the word, ist, ist, totally intuitive, ist. At the beginning of the word, 
For example, start, it's start, start, start. You may be confused. If you live in Bayern, Bavaria, or Baden-Württemberg, there is a high likelihood that people around you are pronouncing every single S-T and S-P like sh and sh But it's dialect. Live with it. Understand why they're doing it. I don't care if you do it. I'm not going to judge you. I might do it sometimes. But the thing you have to realize is it's not Hochdeutsch. It's not standard German. It's dialect. Correct pronunciation is at the beginning of a word like sprung, jump, sprung, or start, start. To pronounce the S-T or S-P like an S-C-H-T or S-C-H-P. But in the middle of a word or at the end of a word, leave it alone. Pronounce it like it is, like the city Constance. <laughs> it's cons- Constance. But the locals, they're Swabian. They say Constance. Q-U. As in English, Q is almost always accompanied by a U. In fact, I can't think of a single example in which Q is unaccompanied by a U. But if... All right, well, here's the answer. It's pronounced like a K and a V. Qualität. Quality. Qualität. Why is that? Because it's a Q and a U, not a Q and a W. I don't know. But the U sounds kind of like actually the sound from the W. The V sound that was built into the W. Remember that? V, V, V. Um, Qualität. 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 That's basically what we're working with there. Qualität. It's kind of a Qv. Qv. Uh... I actually can't explain why. I don't know why. Why is that U actually pronounced kind of like a W? But, hey, look. We've seen the connection all of our lives. Why is U pronounced U and W pronounced W even though it looks like a V? Two Vs, a double V. It is what it is, guys. All right, now. The last and potentially most powerful or destructive combination of letters that you or I or any German speaker, native speaker, or Fremdsprache lerner, <laughs> or a second language learner of uh, German can use is the CH. And no combination of letters is more contentious than No, I don't know. I would say ST is just as contentious as CH, but... All right. How do you pronounce the CH sound? Is it the same as in English? No. Um, I would compare this to Germans trying to say the TH sound, which, by the way, is pronounced just like a T in German. Not TH, but T, or T. It's just not a th. They can't make this sound. Th. And I've talked about this. I made a video all about it. Because, like I said, my name includes the sound. And it is really, really a close-to-heart topic for me. So, um, CH. How do you pronounce it in German? This is absolutely going to require its own video. But if you're in this for the long run, 51 minutes into this video... Let's get it done, guys. So, C-H. It's a bit like a snake, to be honest. I mean, uh, that's not my personal observation. Someone said that to me, and I said, you know what? That's true. That's pretty right. But um, the tendency is to lean towards the familiar ch which is wrong. It's not ch. It's So how do you make that sound? It comes in with air coming across the top of the tongue. Um, with the tongue relatively high up in the back between 
your uvular palate. I do not know if that's actually the correct pronunciation. Uvular palate. I do think it's correct, but I'm not. I'm not sure because it sounds kind of funny. Uh, but this uvular palate uh, is basically the soft palate. If you touch the roof of your mouth with your tongue, there's bone up there because it's your skeleton. Uh, it's your skull. And uh, once you get f- far enough back, you get into just like soft tissue. And that's your uvular palate. That's where the air is coming over. It's not coming over like it's coming in between your teeth or over your tongue right behind your teeth. With the um, CH sound, it's coming over the back of your throat and just getting uh, squished by your tongue in between a small space somewhere where the beginning of the soft tissue starts on past the bone if you feel around your tongue a little bit when no one's looking and um play with the sounds in your mouth a little bit it's uh it's up here somewhere and um it makes a big difference it makes a real big difference saying ish compared to uh ich the word for I, ich, 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 not ish, and it's a common error, especially among um, people who learn uh, German from a, an English background, and uh, there are other languages where they prefer to make that sound because it's already a familiar feeling and uh, a familiar sound, but um, the correct pronunciation is ich. And especially because it's such an important sound it came at the end of such a long video, it will definitely be getting its own video on this channel. It's important. But um, that's it. That's all the sounds and the combinations, the letters individually, both different and similar. And we're rounding out at about an hour. Um, It's basically an hour long lecture on almost every single sound that you will encounter. It could be one of the most productive hours if uh, you soak in, you know, 90% of this over maybe listening to it twice or three times within the first three to four months, five months of your German learning. Every couple of months, come back, listen to this video again, and uh, just say to yourself, am I paying attention to these points uh, is this all easy for me? If so, then your pronunciation is probably good. And to be honest, I do think if your pronunciation's uh, good, that you'll be hearing about that. Uh, people will be Im- uh, impressed because these common errors, as easy as they are to resolve, are often left untended to. And um, what that leads to is people have... Pr- the, the German people don't always have the highest expectations for people who learn their language. And um, when you can pronounce these pretty well and um, not get stumbled up on a lot of the common stumbling blocks, um, one, people are going to be impressed and they might even mention that to you. And two, they might even take you under the, your wing to tell you about maybe some other Kleinigkeiten, some other little small issues that they could um, maybe give you a tip on um, because they can see that you're catching on to a lot of stuff and uh, they want to see that happen like if they're if they're gonna see you again uh, you know maybe if they're a colleague and they want to uh, d- to see how well you can uh, progress then they they'll see that you've already come so far and give you a little bit of uh, an extra nudge And if you have your own personal observations, tips, I mean, this is a long video. So hopefully I haven't missed anything within the broad strokes of pronunciation um, of of consonants. Once again, this is just the consonants. So there's going to be another video for the vowels. Um, Hopefully the relationship between the length of that video and the relationship and the relationship to the number of vowels and the number of consonants in the alphabet will be a little bit better because there are only five vowels, sometimes Y, and 21 consonants. So hopefully we have maybe uh, a video half as long for the vowels because in German there are actually three extra vowels. This is how you make the three in German. 
um, three extra vowels because of the umlauts. And um, the things uh, that I'll mention for the vowels, I mean, they can't be totally um, independent from the consonants. But uh, because this consonants video is already here, then it'll make explaining the vowels a little bit easier because I always have the support of the explanations in this video uh, because they are really, really um, tied together. So I remember I thought I had uh, really gotten my R's down and uh, I my wife told me that when I said uh, the word for please or um, it's kind of word for please, yeah, it's kommt darauf an. Um, gerne, gerne. Uh, that I was modifying the vowel sound, and I was like, "I'm having a, a trouble. I'm having trouble with the R, and you're saying I'm having trouble with the vowel." And it took me like a couple of days to wrap my head around. It's the same problem. I'm having trouble with the R, and therefore the vowel sounds weird. And um, this sort of uh, this sort of description, this sort of analysis is really hard to make concrete because we don't have 3D models of our mouths. And even if we did, how like, you don't have a 3D view from the outside of your mouth. You know, you don't have, so if you had a 3D model which could show you the exact position shape of a mouth in this sound, then how are you going to know you're making that? Or how are you going to make yourself make that? So you have to trial and error it. You have to iterate it. And you have to really take your time to devote some time for ear training and um, and just pronunciation training. You really have to listen for the differences. And one of the greatest ways that you can improve your pronunciation is to record your own voice and then listen back to it. As painful, embarrassing, even if you're the only one who ever hears it, or as uncomfortable as that may be, it is really powerful to get that outside sound of your own voice if what you're trying to do is tune your voice, your pronunciation, your um, just your sound. I mean, it, it is sort of fake in a way, trying to decide what your voice is going to be. And um, it's... Yeah, it's fake, but at the same time, you do it anyway. Everyone does it anyway. It's a... Uh, uh, um, deciding who you want to be, who you want to sound like, what you want to sound like, how you want to uh, present yourself. Um, and in that light, it's always the easiest thing to do to just get a quick outside perspective with a camera or a microphone so that um, you can correct your course. Because if you don't like watching it, then change what you don't like about it. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing fake about that, really. Uh, and that objective outside perspective will really help you to go through these every three or four months and just see, am I improving in the areas that I had trouble with before that I've targeted to improve in? And if not, what's what's holding me up? Let's get to the bottom of it. Let's analyze it. And um, no shame about it. Let's find the weak spots and strengthen them. Um, I outlined some of the areas where people... Uh, actually, I wouldn't say outlined. I went in pretty deep on this one. Uh, I went into detail about where people do have and where I personally had and where English speakers in general have uh, tripping points, uh, easy um, ways to fix those and um, really objectively how to pronounce every single letter and every combination for the consonants in the German language. Um, yeah. So, 
I can't wait for you to, uh, to see you in the vowels video. <laughs> we'll be back soon. And um, until then, you got a lot of consonants to learn. <laughs>